Hello again. Today we're going to try this dry fly. This is like a, a cross between a mayfly and a grey wolf really. Um, but it does a very good impression um, of a mayfly or, or any large sort of hatching fly that's coming off that's mayfly size, you know. Um, it works quite well for March browns actually. I've caught quite a few at this time of year, um, you know, when they're hatching. Um, on this fly but anyway uh, I'll explain the materials as I go so first of all the hook is a uh, it's a partridge hook and it's a dry fly supreme and it's in a size 10 so it's quite a large dry fly really I'm just gonna pop that in the vise thread now threads an interesting one um, well, I've said that, you probably won't think it's interesting in the slightest. But anyway, so I ordered some fluoro shell pink UTC 70. Um, but when it came, it was obviously, it obviously been left in the sun or something. And it's actually been really bleached. Um, but it's gone this lovely tan colour. And it's still a usable thread, you know. So anyway, I start just past the eye. Nice and neat touching turns with a waxed thread come down to almost like the beginning of the point, uh, beginning of the, the bend as it starts to come round. I just caught a five there, let's get rid of that. Tail is squirrel tail. And I take, well, I take a decent-ish bit, I suppose. Uh, take a bit like that. And I just pull it from the skin. And I'm going to stack it. So I've got a little hair stacker here. So I just pop it in the hair stacker. Get it all in there. Oh, come on. There's always one stubborn fibre. And then just tap it on your desk. Just tap, tap, tap. And it should line all the fibres up. Oh, we've got a couple of naughty ones there. But you can see there it's just lined. Let's get those naughty ones out. So it's lined all those ends of those fibers up. Lovely, brilliant tool here, stackers. So I'm just going to take it from the stacker and I want the tail to be a bit longer than the hook, actually. So we're going to get a measure of just past the hook. That's lovely. And I'm going to catch it on. Got a fiber there. I'm just going to catch it on, try and keep it on the top. So I'm holding it up, I'm going to run down till I'm just past where the barb is, take a turn underneath, catch it, have a look. I reckon I've got a little bit too much, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back, a couple of turns, I'm just going to take some away. I'm going to take that away, I think. If you think you've got too much, always go back. It's always a judging thing when you cut it. Um, Anyway, I'm waffling. So again, just offer it up, hold it on the top, come down, take a turn underneath, and then pull towards the eye of the hook and it spreads the fibres, that's a bit better. And now take a turn to lock. And I'm gonna run it up, full length of the body. Oops, try and, try and keep it in uh, behaving itself. They all try and go back on you like that did. And there we go. I'm just going to come back a couple of turns. Right, now I'm going to trim that. There we go. Tie in the waist of what you've trimmed. Wax your thread. And then come back to the end of that body and we're going to tie in the wings. And the wings are just teal feathers, two teal feathers. And all I do with these is catch them on the top with the curve going back, back towards the, uh, the point of the hook. And I just, oops, come here, you monkey. Catch them on, try and keep one on my side, uh, one on one side, one on the other. And I'm gonna pull them in I'm keeping sort of there until it's kind of like a 
a bit longer than that the actual hook would be actually so just keep trying to get your measure just it just helps to prop it up that's all right I'm just going to have a little bit shorter and I'm going to catch that off I'm going to trim I'm going to take the other feather the other feather is always easiest because you can just match it up to the other one as long as you get that first one right we just pull it in come on make sure they're both equal when you're happy tighten up now I'm gonna run the thread down a little bit on this one and then I'm gonna trim the stem off and that's just gonna help with giving me a taper to the fly spin your thread anti-clockwise flatten it out UTC thread is a flat thread so and now just have a little bit of a tidy up going down All right I'm going to tie a rib and the rib the rib is literally brown cotton um, just brown sewing cotton just tie that in don't worry too much if you um, don't worry too much if it goes it spins on you on the uh, around the hook as long as you uh, have tied it in well now I'm just gonna come up and down to get a nice taper now we're going to put in the dubbing. Dubbing is just, this is a super fine box and this one is tan. We're just going to take some from the box. It's lovely stuff to use this super fine. It's probably the, the easiest dubbing to dub on. It just really behaves itself. We're going to get that on there. I'm going to take a turn. I'm going to tighten. And now you just want to have a nice a nice body that's tapering and there we go I'm just gonna come back there's a funny little I want a little bit more there I'm just gonna come in there and that's better and there we go when you're happy with that we're gonna come up with the rib come out so she's going to come up through the rib through that super fine nice neat equal turns when you come up to the thread just gonna this last turn whoopsie daisy just want this last turn there we go catch that off Do cut the rib free. Have a look. That's all right. Right, hackles. I've got a grizzle hackle here, and I'm going to put a a dun coloured hackle on as well. So I'm just going to make sure I've got plenty of wax on this thread. We're going to prop the wings up with a couple of turns. So we're going to pull the wings back, and we're going to tie right under them like that. Take the thread up. Bring the thread back. Okay, it just it just props those wings up, you know. There we go. I'm happy with how that looks. I mean, you can if you want separate these wings. Um, you can separate the wings, and you can just take a little figure of eight through them, just like that, and it and it and it can help to. Um, separate them if you so wish but normally I'm just happy to let them do what they want they do anyway once you've caught a couple of fish so we're going to catch the grizzle hackle on I'm going to trim that stem whoops I'm going to trim that stem and on the way back down, I mean the way back, you know, down the hook, yep, I'm going to uh, tie in the dun coloured feather. So let's catch that. 
You've always got to mind your wings out of the way when you're doing this because they can they can get in the way and be a pain. Make sure that's tied in. Take a turn around, turn around the back, minding your wings. Mm, there's a fibre there, and it's just causing me a little bit of a little bit of aggro. There we go. Bring the thread back. Make sure we got a nice bit of wax thread there. Now I'm going to bring the grizzle one round. And I'm just going to do a turn at the back. A turn up underneath the wings. Whoops, let go of the feather there. Turn at the back, pop the wings, turn underneath the wings. And then I'm just going to go another, that's one, two, three four turns of that grizzle hackle, catch him, pull him back out of the way, it's where you've got to make sure you've got plenty of wax, take away the stem, come on, there we go, now we're going to bring, I'm going to put a hackle blower on this one because the feather's getting a bit too short, we're going to bring the, the sort of dun coloured one. We're going to do one, two turns at the back, and then put the wings back again. Do one, two, three. I want four, really. Four, there we go. Just enough feather, look. Catch it. Right, probably better just break that feather because it's come to the end of its feather. Tether. <laughs> come around with a couple of turns. And then we're just going to... I'm sorry if you can hear that dog. It does nothing but... um. Well, I would say it does nothing that bark. It doesn't always bark, but sod's law, it's now decided to bark at something while I'm doing a video. So if you can hear that, I'm very sorry. But we're going to come in with a whip finish. I put um, varnish on the thread, like I normally do. We're going to come up. We're going to trim. And we're going to have a look at the fly. If any varnish got into the... Hackle, just quickly brush it and you'll brush it out actually. Good little trick I learned from being a oaf. And there there it is. I mean, it does a good impression of a mayfly. And like I said, I've had when the big March browns are coming off. Um, you can see how the wings oh sorry. You can see how the wings are nicely um you can see how the wings are nicely uh split apart there. They give a good impression of a wing. Um Give this one a go. I quite enjoy tying these mayflies, actually. Um, a bit of gink. I put a bit of gink or mousseline, and if it's just not sitting right, you can come underneath with some scissors, and you can just sort of take away, uh, take away some on the bottom, just like I'm doing here. And what you'll do is you'll cause, you know, you'll give it, you'll give it a flat, a flat, a flat bottom. Sorry, I didn't mean to say a flat about 10 times then. Um, and you'll find it, it, it will sit better for you on the water. Um, but give it a go. It catches fish, this one. Anyway, hope you enjoyed that. Once again, please subscribe to the channel. Please hit the like button. And I'll see you again on the next one. Thank you.